This is going to be a video recording behind the scenes, if you like, of a podcast for Mythical Makers. So welcome to, to a behind the scenes for the Mythical Makers podcast. In a moment, Karen will do our regular introduction and then we will be able to get into some of the goodies that Dana is going to be sharing with us about systems and how amazingly awesome they can be for your business. So Karen, over to you. Okay. Welcome to our Mythical Makers podcast. Today we're talking with Dana Gervais and um, discussing her business systems and how they can help you in your business. So welcome, welcome to our, our little podcast world. We uh, we tend to chat through Zoom across the planet, um, and once a week we release the Mythical Makers podcast. And so today, Dana, before we dive into systems, which I love, and I can spend all day long talking about systems, do you want to give people who don't know who you are um, a bit of a, an introdu introduction and overview of, of where your particular skill set lies? Uh, I'm a knitwear designer. I specialize in socks. I can knit and design other things, but socks are kind of my niche. Um, I have also been, until very recently, a tech editor. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> have you had business experience prior to your, um, your knitting life? Yeah, I was, um, my career started, I was a financial planner for high net worth individuals. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I became a nonprofit credit counselor. We've had our own business doing rental consulting and property management. And now I'm doing this. Okay, so you've got a very solid business background behind, um, behind what you're doing now. And also, I, I imagine that that has played somewhat into the fact that you understand and appreciate the importance of systems in your business yes very much okay yes. I, in, in case people aren't 100 percent sure what we're talking about if you don't have a plan and we all know i i love to plan um then then you can run amok and, and do a whole host of, of activity but it won't actually get you anywhere if you have a plan without a system you can't replicate your plan so if your plan succeeds you can't do it again easily. You've got to go back to square one and try and work out what worked. Uh, whereas if you systemize things, then you have a plan within a plan that you follow every single time. So you know what you're doing, when you're doing it. If something, God forbid, should happen to you as an individual working in your business, then you can have somebody else pick up your systems and follow your systems so that you and your business are still earning money and still doing all the things that, that should be done whilst you recover from whatever life throws at you that takes your time away from your business. So systems are in a very basic form, a list of instructions that somebody, whether that's you or somebody else can follow to get the right. same. It's literally a checklist of processes, right? Mm -hmm. And in addition to picking up the slack, if you become ill or unable to work, it allows you to scale your business because if you become big enough that you decide that you need to really just focus on the creative part of your business and it's time for you to start outsourcing um, and offloading some of the admin stuff, you have systems in place and it's very easy for you to affect that handoff and make sure that what you were doing is done consistently by the next person. And it also makes sure that your customer always has a consistent experience because everything is always handled the same way. Every release is exactly the same. Every shop updated is exactly the same. Every listing is exactly the same. And it's on brand and your customers recognize it as, as you. And that is mm -hmm. so And cool. so it's familiar. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's absolutely crucial um, for, for that familiarity, that comfort, and just making sure that your, your customer is getting high quality every single time you do something. Uh, which is something that, that I definitely worry about when I release things. When I look back at some of the earlier patterns that I released and I look back at some of the free tutorials that I did and even I hadn't even got um, a style sheet sorted for myself. So my terminology changes out all over the place because I was just writing it by when and then I look back at it now and I'm like, oh, lordy, what was I doing? But that was because I just started. So I do plan on going back and revisiting and making everything consistent now that I've have a standard style sheet and and um, all that kind of thing but but these systems take it that one step further so it's not just what you're outputting 
in terms of the wording of a pattern it is it is that next step up beyond that so karen you did some some testing if i remember rightly for the business mm -hmm. i did i did um when dana first uh was trying to get her system put together um, in a package for for people to actually purchase um, she she put out a call for people that wanted to beta test and um, it, it there are just there's a lot of different things that are available for the system so there's um, there's a bunch of uh, Trello boards that you can use and and adapt to your own business there are a lot of uh, spreadsheets and things like that that you can use um, and Dana's got some videos that walk you through the process of using each of those different elements and um, and the thing that I liked about the business was that it was it, it which it was built specifically to be able to customize it for your business so if you were pretty early on and there's only a certain number of things that you're ready to use then you can go ahead and implement those things and save the other things for later and uh, so it, it was just it's really nice to be able to um, just adapt it to exactly where you are in your business at this moment in time. Okay. So Dana, which part of somebody's business, if they've not systemized anything at all, what aspects of their business do you think is the most crucial for them to, to create a system around? I think that you need to start where you are. So whatever the next thing you're about to do in your business is the thing that you need to systematize. So if you're planning to sit down today to write a blog post, for example, as you're doing it, sit down and write out every single step, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, open Google doc folder, blog posts, create new doc, out, create outline with bullet points, right? Turn bullet points into sentences, um, have thing proofread, create graphics, like whatever you have to do, open, Squarespace, that happens to be the web host that I use, uh, mm -hmm. you know, click on blog, click on new, format blog post, insert graphics, you know, uh, add links, confirm that links are working, add thumbnail image, like every single thing that you do, it literally takes you five minutes extra while oh. you're doing the blog post, uh, find a permanent, consistent home for it that is a home that you can share with other people, whether that's um, on, in Google Docs, whether that's in Trello, whether that's in Evernote, whatever online portal you like to use to keep information, and boom, you have a blog posting system. Mm -hmm. So start where you're at, right? If the next thing you're about to do today is to do uh, a shop update for your yarn business, then write down every single thing you do when you do your shop update, uh, where you promote it, how often posts should go out, everything. Yeah. Okay. Now that's really cool because again, I think people get confused with thinking that systems are technical things as against the process that you follow to, to make something happen. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think sometimes people get a bit scared that they've got to go out and pay for some, some complicated IT solution when actually what they need need at the very very basic level is a pen and paper exactly. and just write down every single step so yep. that if you can't do it someone else can do what you need and to do if it's like a super mundane step write it down because if the day comes when you do have to hand that off to somebody and it says you know upload blog post to website what website where where is it hosted how do i get in right mm -hmm. so it just takes two minutes to write all of that down and what I've learned is if I can spend five minutes making, uh, you know, bullet points and then turning that into a couple of paragraphs or even dictating into a microphone, I can have a blog post that's branded and consistent and goes up on time, which is, you know, when you, when you make a commitment to do things consistently, whether it's release a pattern once a month or update your shop once a month or put out a blog post once a week or put out a newsletter every other week you're making a commitment to your customers and it's important that you show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So instead of not showing up, if you have the opportunity to get help or whatever, having this, pro having processes in place, make sure that that goes on, make sure that the experience is consistent, make sure that you're showing up and mm -hmm. keeps you in everybody's mind. Yes. And I, I think that if it's a, a portion of your business that particularly stresses you out, if it's yeah. something that gets you kind of ramped up, if you already have that system in place 
and you're ready to go and you're like, okay, I, I know that I'm not going to miss any crucial step along the way because I've got this, this list here that I can refer to, that really helps to kind of alleviate some of that stress, especially like for launches or whatever, whatever it is that gets you stressed out in so your I business. Find both uh, designers anyway will tell me the thing that stresses them the most is um, social media. Mm. They either yeah. don't know what to post, they feel being that they're being too pushy if they post too often, they aren't sure that they're, um, that the content that they're posting to social media is curated enough. So one benefit to having a system is it's really nice if you can sit down once a month or once a week Po get everything mm -hmm. ready to post, get it scheduled to post, and then not think about it. Other than yeah. maybe going into yeah. whatever yeah. social media platform you use once a day and commenting on other people's posts so that you are present and um, engaged. Uh, mm -hmm. But you don't have to sit every day and worry, what am I going to post now? Like, I just posted a picture of my my work in progress yesterday. Like, I don't want to, right? What am I going to post? So to have that done and not have to think about it for a week or a month, is pretty freeing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Also, if there is something that you particularly hate doing, for me, <laughs> that would be, Karen knows the answer to this already, that would be testing. I just, <laughs> I have such a mental thing about it. I love supporting people through the tests. I love seeing their, their work through the tests, but I hate setting a test up and, and starting that process and finding the testers. Um, so if I know that these are the steps that I need to go through, then I can just find somebody else to do that bit for me. And then I can do all the supporting stuff quite happily, but someone else can do the setting it up and, and getting it kicked off and, and initiated. Um, and so if there's some other process that you absolutely loathe and you find that you have a smidgen of budget available, that you can get yourself a VA to do one task a month for you, you can hand off that task that you loathe, which will make you feel so much better especially if you've already documented it and you know that it's really simple. You just send them this document or point them to this directory and then they've got all the information they need to go and do this, this one thing that you hate on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, or if there's a task that you just can't do, like I cannot do yeah. behind the scenes stuff on my website. I cannot, mm -hmm. like I could learn, I could watch all the YouTube videos. I could ask for help, but the time that I would have to invest in doing that, yeah. I can spend designing, mm -hmm. which and it's, it's just not worth it to you. Mm -hmm. um, so I would much rather um, ask for help and pay someone to do the behind the scenes website stuff for me. It's just not mm -hmm. worth my while to learn that right now. Well, yeah. besides, designing is more fun as well. Yeah. <laughs> of course. That's, so That's yeah. what we're in it for, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As somebody who spent far too many years working on, in IT, I can tell you that the designing is far more fun than mm. filling <laughs> the end of your website. I promise you. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's all really, really cool. So when did you decide that you were going to bundle your system so that other people could use them, Dana? Well, I get asked a lot um, by other designers and sometimes newer designers, like how do you put out so many designs? How do you do all the things consistently all the time? And, and they say things like, but I don't have full-time hours. Like I have a full-time job or I have a family and I don't know how to do it. And I realized, you know what, my systems already exist. So it's not, it's not like it's taking me a lot of time and energy to create them. All I literally have to do is put them in a format that's shareable and then other people can use them. So now when people come to me and say like, how do you do this? How do you do that? I say, well, I have a system for everything. Like I literally only work a couple of hours a day at my computer because everything, I always have a list. I always know exactly I can, I have four to six projects on the go at a time because I release 24 patterns a year. So I always have something in some stage of production. So I have a Trello board where I can look at every project. I can see exactly where we are with that project. I can see what the next step is for everything. And because everything is systematized, I don't have to look for the next step. I don't have to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing today. It's like all done. Like I literally just sit down and do it take it off and then it's it just kind of happens automatically now yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah if you if you've and got I, a, a way of, of actually putting due dates in and then everything else backfills because your systems just automatically backfill for the trello boards for example so yeah. if you and that's how it works it starts with a release date so i know yeah. that I, if i have a release coming up on september 9th and it takes me two months to put out a sock 
I have to start working on that sock July 9th. And the first step is sketching, swatching, identifying yarn, right? Like I yeah. know what the steps are. So every step of the design process gets filled in with September 9th in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's doubly important if you were, you were talking, Babs, about um, people who are doing their design business as a side hustle, you know, the mm -hmm. side hustle. Um, if you've got another full-time job that you're working and you're trying to just, you know, shoehorn in 10 minutes here and 20 minutes there and, and whatever, it's so much easier to be more productive in those really, really small time windows if you have a plan of yeah. I know this is only going to take me 10 minutes to do so this is something that I can sit down and do in this 10 minutes I have available and nothing gets forgotten like I said yeah. the customer experience is consistent because every release I do is the same like every blog post I do is the same like nothing I mean after I've, I've got over 80 patterns out or almost not over 90 I don't know but I still use the checklist the design checklist for every pattern the pattern release for every uh, checklist for every pattern the newsletter checklist for every newsletter, like I still use them. And if yeah. I didn't, there would be one or two little steps that I would forget. Like I'd forget to pin the thing to my Pinterest boards or I would forget to promote it on a specific social media channel or whatever. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's nice if you can have something that, that becomes a mindless process to follow so that you can just put your mind elsewhere where it's more productive. That is so much better for, for someone who's running their own business and it can it can actually do the work of about five other people just <laughs> in the background rather than you running around trying to remember everything it just, yeah. just sort of there's more than one way to scale a business if you don't have right. the money to hire help or if you don't want to hire help because some people want to be a solopreneur yep. and they don't want to involve anybody else you can absolutely scale your business using systems and using technology yes right you can use a, a buffer or a later or a meet Edgar to schedule social media, for example, instead of hiring a VA and have the mm -hmm. same effect, mm -hmm. right? You can use a really good calendar program with reminders to remind you of due dates and the next step in a process without having to hire somebody or go outside of financially yeah. go outside of your business. Mm -hmm. And that will prepare you if you, if you are, you know, hoping to go from, doing it as a side hustle to making it your full-time business that allows you to do yeah. that and and know when you're actually ready to do that to make that leap and if your goal is to have a team and you're going to have like a huge company with departments and people before you can hand anything off you have to know how you have to have a process yourself so if yeah. i'm going to hand off you know pattern layout for example I need to know what my pattern looks like. I need to know what programs I use. I need to know how long it takes so that mm -hmm. I know if the person I'm handing it off to is doing it in a reasonable amount of time and is doing it the way that I would want it done. Mm -hmm. right? Because again, you're looking for that consistency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you know, everything that I put out needs to look like I did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the key thing is that you spend your time in your zone of genius as against yeah. you spend your time just slogging through right. all the other stuff because yeah. if you're in your zone of genius then you're earning money you are, you are yeah. earning money from the activities that you're doing exactly uh, you know fiddling about with the back end of a website whilst it might make a prettier website it's not actually going to earn you any cash in your bank balance exactly, at the end. exactly. and it frees you up mentally when you know you have a trusted place where everything lives you don't mm. have to think about it so yeah. you don't have to constantly think about, I've got to get that newsletter out. I have a newsletter. It's got to go out on Thursday. I have to get that newsletter out because you know that you've already got a process. There's, it's, it's coming up daily on your to-do list. So that frees you up mentally to design the next thing, to dye the next batch, to do whatever it is that you need yeah. to do uh, strategically to keep your like vision moving forward. You don't want to get bogged down working in your business. It's about freeing up the mental capacity to work on your business, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to include in both the podcast and the description for the video, uh, the links through to the business system so people can, can go and get the, the whole system. Um, are you able off the top of your head? This is a big ask. I know to, to list off the different portions within the system. Just the, oh. the self I've got um, quarterly goal planning, uh, cause I never plan anything more than 
three months in advance. So I've got quarterly goal planning, social media content planning, uh, pattern design workflow, pattern release workflow, uh, sample knitter workflow, um, bookkeeping, um, I think blog post and newsletter workflow. I can't remember if, what else is in there. I don't, I know I didn't do one for test knitting just because it's so individual the way every designer does it. Some of them use Facebook mm -hmm. and some yeah. of them use Ravelry and some, right. So, um, I did not do one for test knitting, but I'm trying to think of what else there is. And I can't, I can't off the top. I mean, it's early here. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the brain's not fully awake yet. <laughs> okay. Well, as, 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 my kids are yeah. still in bed early. As you can see, that's actually a massive list of, of, of workflows and to-do lists and, and charts that just flow one through the other. And the business system is, is going to give you a whole host of answers um, for what do I do next? How do I do this? What do I need to think about if I'm doing a pattern launch? you know, where do I need to share it? What, what sort of content do I need to produce? How mm -hmm. often do I need to send no newsletters? And of course you can tweak all of those things to, yeah. to work with your release schedule. So it's designed to be tweaked. It's designed yeah. to be like a launch pad so that you can take from it what works for you, build mm -hmm. on it. Cause mm -hmm. you know, there's, everybody does things differently. There's gonna be things that I do that you don't, that you're gonna instantly delete. And there's gonna be things that you're like, why wouldn't she have put that, that you're gonna instantly add. And that's exactly yeah. what it is for to be a framework so that you don't yep. have to spend the time and energy creating the framework the framework exists yeah that's one of the things that I like the best about it is that I don't have to do it exactly the same way that you did it yes. um, but I can I can see the way that you did it and go okay I think this will work for me and this maybe not so much um, I think I'd rather do this step in this manner or you know change the order exactly. of things or whatever um, it's very customizable. That was one of the things that I liked the best. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> cool. Do you have anything else that you want to, to say or discuss, Dana? Not that I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that's a lot. It's still early. Uh, do you have any other questions for Dana, Karen? I don't think so. No, I think we've been quite thorough. <laughs> <laughs> We grilled her today. We grilled her this early in the morning. Um, as I say, we'll put links um, down below. And mm -hmm. um, what is the name of your stock designs? What What's the, the brand that people should be looking for, Dana, when oh, they're going about Dana Drube Designs. Dana Drube Designs .com. Lovely. And we'll get links to, to that put in there as well for people okay. so that they can take a look because your socks are stunning. They are <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm a complete... Um, Soccer file is that a word? I don't know, but I love. Socks. <laughs> I love. I love knitting them. I love everything about socks. So, I'll, you know. I'll ask you a question, Dana. What's what's your favorite heel? Uh, to wear personally, heel flap and gusset or strong heel because I have a high instep. Ah, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And yeah, if I'm, you like, do you like to design with that one? Um, I like to design with all of them. I like to yeah. change it up a lot because I knit a lot of my own samples and I don't. I don't want to get bored always knitting the same heel. And that I don't makes sense. my staff to get bored always knitting the same heel. And mm -hmm. um, I'm now trying to also put in a lot of modification. Like I'm now including instructions to add gussets to a short row heel or an afterthought heel because mm -hmm. high instep people, we want to be able to wear those heels too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah I, I love, I'm always playing with heel construction. I'm doing a lot of art shaping right now. Like cool. I like to play with that type of construction. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, as, um, as somebody who struggles with tube socks, they might have pretty heels, but tube socks don't seem to want to go on my feet very comfortably. Well, Whilst they're not, like, I don't, they're not foot shaped. <laughs> no, they're not. Yeah, right. right? Exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, a, 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 a single cylinder with a, with a fancy heel just doesn't, doesn't cut it. And whilst I don't like the word gusset, as Karen knows, I always seem to get embarrassed whenever I say it. Oh. <laughs> utterly ridiculous. I do love a heel flap and then it just, just fits so nicely. It, it mm -hmm. does. Yeah. It's I actually love gussets. I think they're one of the most like amazing mm -hmm. looking parts of the sock. I like a mm -hmm. properly done gusset is absolutely beautiful to me. Ditto for yeah. thumb gussets on mitts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I love yeah. a good gusset. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're just going to keep saying it until you get used to the word. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Right. Well, <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. Um, thank you. Hopefully, hopefully um, this has explained why we like a good system um, and how it can benefit you, not just today, but as your business grows, as you have more time to, to uh, spend on your business, you can then use that time more effectively by following systems. And also, if you find that the time that you have available reduces, you can outsource uh, very effectively and far more quickly and smoothly if you have systems in place. And it should be invisible to your customer, to your end customer, if you have the correct systems in place um, so that everything that goes out is consistent, it's on brand and it looks like it's you all the time, which is what you want for your customers at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so a massive, massive thank you to Dana uh, for, for sharing your information about systems and your, your knowledge of socks and gussets. Um, <laughs> and, uh, we will catch up with everybody um, in a future podcast or video so if you have any questions um please put them below the video or in the uh, in the podcast and uh we will do our best to make sure that they are answered for you all great thank you very much for having me oh you're very welcome Dave. thanks bye bye bye, -bye.